Dual Review is brought to you by NexusDigitalComics.com. On today's Dual Review, it's Ascension, the card game for iOS. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome to January 22nd. It is a Tuesday and we are doing Ascension, the card game for iOS. That's right. Uh, Ascension, the card game is a, is a deck building game. It came out in 2010 and it's another one of those games that came out of uh, Magic the Gathering success. You know, we have like uh, Doherty and, and um, Gary uh, that have lent their names to this. They've built their own company and they released Ascension and it is a quintessential, you know, deck building game. It is you know, one of the ones that started it all, you know, the, the popularity of them now. And it is a very decent game. Now, um, deck building games are pretty easy to figure out for the most part. And um, they're fairly cheap when it comes to board game land. I mean, like $30. Uh, but it is enough that people that are maybe just cursorily interested might resist uh, uh, playing these games. So the iOS version came out, and it's a very solid version and a lot of fun. And it's literally... Five dollars with dollar expansions. So for under ten bucks, you can have everything, and uh, it works brilliantly. It teaches you how to play it. So that's why I wanted to talk about the iOS version. Now, if you're not familiar with Ascension, it is based off. Uh, well, the core game is called Chronicle of a God Slayer. Um, so it's got this, you know, this mythos. The art is very kind of fairy tale and almost like medieval kind of feel to it. Yeah. So it, it has this, you know, magical world. Um, a little different than magic, though, because there's not really vampires and stuff, but there are constructs, there are there are mechana, or whatever they call it, I don't know how they pronounce it, um, but machines, you know, kind of like golems and things like that, and then there are, there are imps and fairies and things, and then there are evil ones that you have to destroy, and there's like, you know, uh, the expansions are really fun, they, they have like the Void expansion, and the uh, Storm of Souls expansion, and it just really elaborates and gives you way more characters, and it's just a lot of fun. Now, um, there's, you know, there's tutorials and online play if you want to know how to play it. So we're just going to talk about our experiences. Uh, we get into less trouble that way. Because when we talk about rules, people are like, you don't like that rule, blah, blah, blah. So whatever. Um, the iOS game also has a tutorial that seems to be geared towards newcomers. Now, it is very thorough, and it's play-by-play. -play, so if you've never played a, a card game that is deck builder or even a card game in general, it will hold your hand through it. And I think it's a very solid, you know, for us, it's kind of like, okay, okay, I got it, yeah, I got yeah, yeah. it. But I think it's a very solid tutorial, and that's why I wanted you to play it. Don't, don't you agree? Yeah, it's as, very out of all the tutorials I've ever played, this is, probably, yeah, this is probably the most intuitive. It tells yeah, you everything. It tells you to do this right now, and it tells you why and whatever. And it's not like some other tutorials, like tomorrow we're going to be talking about Nightfall, and it's iOS as well. And it has a, it has a part that's like, well, you wouldn't normally do this with a card, but we're going to go ahead and do this for the tutorial. Right, it's right. Like, ah, whatever. Um, so, and it's very rapid, it's very fast paced, um, so I really do enjoy Ascension on the iOS, uh, it's a lot of fun, you can play up to four player, you have different difficulty levels, now, I've never been, like, trolloped, but at the same time, I haven't always won, so it's a good difficulty, especially if you bump it up to two, now, see, there's like a little slot that, like, it looks like you can draw it up three, but you can never go back to two, I don't know what the deal is, maybe they'll introduce that later, a uh, harder, I don't know. Anyway, um, and it's one of those things that you're you're deck building and you're you're defeating enemies in a line in a row, and so you're trying to get victory points. And the cards that you acquire get victory points. Cards you defeat get victory points. But the victory points aren't everything because how many cards you have in different parts of your deck, you know, those will count for something. Because a lot of times um, when you start the game, let's say it's just the two of us, I think it's 25 victory points for each of us. So there's like 50 together. Is it 30? Anyway, there's that pool of victory points, and so once you get, I think it's, I think it is 30, once you get past uh, 30, then you're like, oh, well, I've got this, you know, I've got 32 points, and he's only got 27, so the next point, and the game's gonna be over, and whatever, but then I'll lose, and I'll be like, what? And that's because he acquired more expensive cards, you know, like better cards, or more cards, or, so there is a different uh, level there, it's not just about victory points, it's also about the cards you acquire, and how they all add up together. Um, of course, it is essentially victory points because in the in the bottom corner of the card is the victory points so if you're really paying attention then you know what you're you're accumulating but right, right. um there's also you know like constructs that come into play and they stay in play 
Uh, so you can use them once per turn sometimes, or sometimes just add an extra you know uh, point to you in either the combat or the acquiring phase. I can't remember what it's what the differential is, but like in Marvel Legends, it's uh, the recruit points and then the power point, you know, the fight points. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is something similar, um, but it's just a lot of fun. Uh, the expand some of the expansions introduce fate cards which kind of throw in a little bit different rule there and it allows everybody to like draw a card or discard a card or whatever and it just becomes uh, a really interesting turn by turn is a little different game I, I really think this is the quintessential i mean like this is what a deck builder should be uh i do wish that there was a little bit more like direct combat like i always say that there's a little direct combat between players yeah yeah um which you're just defeating monsters in line in this one uh, and Nightfall actually has combat between players, so we'll talk about that tomorrow. But otherwise, I think that this is is just kind of like the perfect uh, deck building game. And the iOS version, always solid. I've never had it crash. I even have like the old iPad, never had a problem. Um, the art is is beautiful. Double tap comes up. Now I think the art is a little flat to me, but again, it does harken to that medieval fairy tale kind of. I like the art, yeah. And um, it's just so varied, and you just. It feels a lot of fun now, but the the core game, you really only have the Lifeborn and the Mechanica or whatever. So you only have the two kind of factions, and so that can get a little boring, a little repetitive. Um, but it's good to learn on because you know the cards when they come up, and you're like, okay, you, you spend less time reading the, the small text. Right. But with all the expansions, you have like, you know, four different factions, a bunch of promo cards that you can get. And it's just a lot of fun to see what comes up and, and just uh, endless hours of play. So that's my take on it. Uh, any different? No, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a really fun game. Um, I mean, for it's definitely worth. I mean, I I think altogether it was five, six, seven, eight. I think it was eight dollars altogether for expansion. Comparatively, and with the uh, card game, which is what thirty something. Thirty something just for the core game plus and then, the expansion. Yeah, like 50, so, ten, fifteen dollars for the expansion. So. so yeah, you're looking at what one fifth of the cost. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's totally worth it. I would highly recommend it. If you have an, uh, a device that can play uh, this game, then, yeah, download it. The music is repetitive, but it's catchy. Yeah. So I actually I actually really enjoy it. Are uh, you going to play the Storm of Souls? No, I was not going to. That's one of the expansions. But, yeah, I was just going to show you. Um, yeah, I really hi highly recommend it. If you have any interest in uh, card games, if you haven't played one but want to play one, this is a great place to start. Yeah. Uh, just Yeah, just get it. Yeah, yeah, I believe it's on Android as well, so we can find it there too. And um, let's hope that you know more card games do this. I really enjoy this because you know they've had their chance. They've been popular. They've sold a lot of units, and so now for people who might just you know let it fade into the background, they're doing a low cost version that's very interactive. And um, yeah, you can play online as well. It's not just offline play. Um, and it's just brilliant. I, I think that it's a good way. Because at first I was like, well, that's stupid. Like, you know, like Nirishima Hex. It's like, what, $50 for the core game, but I can get it for like 5 bucks. It's like, wow, they're not making any money. But they have one last chance to, you know, make it popular again. So that's that works for their favor. Two, they don't have to do the production cost. They don't have to print the cards. They don't have to print the board pieces and nothing like that. So it really is a great deal. But it's a good deal for them too. So I think it's a smart move. And I hope that more companies will do that eventually i would love to do a digital version of my card game after a while yeah well here's here's the issue that i'm having um do you think that digital subscription games will uh take away actual physical card games absolutely not because they come out physically first and there are still purists who love to play with the physical card games yeah but if everyone knows that it's going to be coming out on digital you don't think people are just going to wait for the digital version well i mean it's kind of one of those things do you go see a movie in theater oh yes so, I mean, you know, it's the same kind of thing. It's going to be months and months and months. And truth be told, I think I'd, I'd like to play this card, card game form in front of a friend like you. Um, you know, so so I think this did a really good job of reintroducing me to the game. Yeah, I guess I guess I like the digital version less than the card game. Um, instead of when it comes to, like, magic. Because magic has really complex rules sometimes. And so it's nice to have it in the digital form so that it helps you with those rules. Now yeah, you, can, yeah. you can bark at me all you want, but that's the way... I, you know, I, I don't have to worry about it so much, and that's great. This one is much more straightforward and simple, so so I would love to play this, you know, traditionally. But again, I think it's a I think it's a smart move because it gets your game into more hands. I mean, a lot of the um, iOS people, like producers, are doing one game for free to get people to recognize the name and then try to you know charge them or or like Nightfall. You know, it was three dollars to buy Nightfall, but then there's expansions that are like you know three dollars as well. So 
they they um, they spread it more evenly between them. By the end, you know, you're paying thirty bucks for something they never had to produce, or not that much. I guess it's more like twenty fifteen bucks um, for something they didn't have to spend to produce or ship or market or anything like that. Well, they do some marketing, but anyway, I, I think the business model is sound, and yeah. I don't think that physical card games are going anywhere. But we'll see. So that's Ascension, the card game, the iOS version. If you're interested at all, I say go pick it up. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, follow our great playlists. So Game Lab's been a lot of fun. Yes, it has, and please leave comments. We love comments, and you can help support us by buying our website at spiderwolf.com. That's right. Uh, T-shirts, card game, art prints, short stories, and more. You can go online and find a good tutorial of this, too. Like it. Yeah. See you later. Yes. Nice. Next up, we take a look at Nightfall. Hi, everybody. Welcome to January the 22nd. It is Monday, Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's kind of weird anyway. It's like, hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. I don't think you've ever said that before. It was like ringing in my ears. Sorry. Something new. Nick doesn't do new things. No. Well, I stick to formula. It's fairly simple, but very fun. Um, uh, and so we're... we're do, uh, huh? I'm just gonna go into the tutorial really quick here. Um, the tutorial seems to be geared. To Let's start this over again. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> Hi everybody. Hi everybody. That that's the, you threw me off with that. Yeah. Pure fault. Pure fault. I suck so much. <sighs> Hi everybody. <laughs> I was just about to do that. I was trying to get it right so that we both did it at the same time. <laughs> now I'm expecting you to do that. I'm not doing it now. Okay. But, uh, you know, who wants to do this and then pass it to you? You know what I mean? Well, I'm saying if we both had an iOS device. Yeah, that's device, true. But, uh... We could sit in, like, different house, uh, parts of the house and just play without looking at each other. That would be great. <laughs> you kind of was very quiet there, so I wasn't sure if you were doing a blooper or what.